How are you, Jim? Hello, friend. Hello, friend, and you are a great friend, and uh, I admire you so much for so many things you do. I was just talking about you recently. Is that right? About Run Rich Run, <laughs> which I know you've had a lot of fun with through through the years. Yep. There you are, decked out in shirt and tie, and you had all these sleek shoes and the latest equipment on from the uh, Under Armour folks. And <laughs> yes. I was talking to one of the guys who conceptualized that with you, Steve Summers. Oh, yeah? Uh, going on now over to Vineyard Vines, but he, he um, was just talking about what a great guy you were to work with. Thanks, Jim. I appreciate and, you bringing uh, that up. I would. Uh, I tried to start training for something like that, but I blew out a hamstring, so I might be walk, Jim, walk <laughs> for me. <laughs> I don't know if that, I know you're not on Twitter, Jim, but I don't think that hashtag works. It that just, doesn't, <laughs> doesn't have the same no, ring to but it. but it's good to be with you. Looking forward to this game tonight. Me too. Um, you know, it's uh, a pair of uh, one and two teams here that uh, – would certainly like to have the whole complexion of the season change here. Being two and two is uh, is something you can certainly salvage a year. One and three is a hard hole to dig out of. Can be done, but it's hard. You know, I, I'm, we were talking before. It, 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 at times now for Tannehill, because Adam Gase is the quarterback whisperer uh, by trade. Right. And now here he is, and you got Jarvis Landry uh, as one of the top receiving threats in the NFL, and it's – it's kind of time for him to step up on a short week on the road and make this team two and two for them to go home over a five week stretch with four home games. Well, I don't think you can put all the pressure on his shoulders. There's a beat up offensive line that's out there trying to protect them, and they're going to be moving a lot of people around tonight, mm -hmm. depending on who is a late scratch. They've got issues at left tackle with uh, Brandon Albert, and they've got uh, Pouncey, who's going to be out again at center. So I mean, it's it's not easy just to go out and win the game. As, as a thrower when you don't have the throwing lanes and the kind of time that you need to be able to execute. And you got a Cincinnati team's going to have Vontez Burfick back tonight. and He, he definitely is the, the leader of that defense. He, of course, suspended the first three games for, for repeated violations of the uh, NFL safety rules. Um, but I would expect that uh, Cincinnati is going to be a very angry bunch here. They're coming off uh, a loss at home to Denver and um, – you know, it's going to be a tough assignment for Miami. I don't make predictions, but it's going to be a hard place to win and uh, would be a great credit to them if they pulled it off. Yeah, so what? Uh, where, it's interesting you say an angry bunch with the Bengals. How did you find them coming off of that loss to Denver, which is – talk about a, a yardstick or a measuring stick for this team um, that they had them in the house, and, and Denver really put it put it on them with Trevor Simeon being the one to, to, to apply it. Well, he threw for the rookie's first road game as a starter. He comes out and throws for 300-plus and four touchdowns. It's hard to accept. I mean, it's a really hard one to to, to believe that um, that he could beat you up that badly. But, you know, I think that uh, it's uh, the, the biggest thing teams deal with now on a short week for these Thursday games. I don't hear them complaining anymore about physically being ready to play. Uh, that used to be the topic, as you know, mm -hmm. six, seven years ago. Now teams kind of enjoy the 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 short bye week, the what they get on the backside of this, the mini bye, I should say. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of emotionally being able to let go of what just happened and now reload mentally to play again. That's what I'm seeing now. It's gone from physically, how am I going to play, to mentally, how do I get past whether it's a, a great win and a high. Or it's a very difficult loss to deal with, like um, what Cincinnati's coming off with a home loss to Denver. Jim Nance joining me here prior to Thursday night football, Dolphins at Bengals exclusively on NFL Network tonight. And it, it's interesting, Jim, that you've had a front row seat for what I believe is the storyline so far for the first three weeks of the season, which is all these first-time quarterbacks, some of them rookies, performing so well fresh out of the box because you saw Trevor Simeon in uh, in Denver, beat the Colts, and then you saw Carson Wentz and the Eagles. You had a front row seat for that one. How about Jacoby Brissett? Last That's right. Thursday night? That's right. You're right. All I right. I put it in that context, but you know, this is our sixth game in 18 days, which you know, to the guy that doesn't broadcast. And again, I'm not saying this is manual labor. I love what I do. Sure. So I count my blessings. It's just it's a it's so many games. It's you're on to the next one. That you don't have time to reflect or con contextualize things like you've just done. I mean, I just come off a run of rookie quarterbacks, and until you put it that way, I, st I, I had to add Brissett to the list. Yeah. You're right. I mean, I've had Simeon. I've had Brissett. I had Carson Wentz on Sunday. And it's amazing to watch these kids come in with early in the season. In Brissett's case last week, a short week on top of it to prepare. 
I mean, it is an amazing theme here early in the year. Why do you think it is? What, what I mean, just seeing the kids, uh, I assume you've you've had not just the eyeball test, but a chance to maybe chat with them either before a game or before, even with your schedule. Why, why do you think these kids are being able to perform in the manner that they've well, been able to perform? Well, first up, before anybody calls me out on it, you know, mm-hmm. of course, Trevor Simeon's not a rookie. So, That's true. You know, somebody goes, hey, tell Nance he's not a rookie. No, you no, said no. As, as a rookie, as, yeah. a, as, as yeah. a quarterback. No, I was saying that somebody first time. that maybe I, I, and I didn't have my facts straight. Of course, I know he was drafted a year ago in the seventh round out of Northwestern, but this is the first year he's playing. Yep. And it is, it's, you know, I think that like everything else in the world, it's become so specialized. I'm just guessing here. Uh, we've seen athletes in all sports excel at a younger age. There's so much training and feedback and science and you know computer-driven analytics that people are just a lot more prepared to be great at something than they were a generation ago. That's all, all I can chalk it up to. Mm. The, the, the amount of training, whether it's football or golf or some other sport, uh, the analytics are there. Uh, kids are, are, are just – coached and educated on body and science that they weren't doing back when Y.A. Tittle or Fran Tarkington or Phil Simms were playing football. It's just everything is so specialized, scrutinized, and detailed down to the very play that I just think they're – and this is starting out you know, before they're even in college. So when they get to the NFL, they're ready to play sooner mm-hmm. in most cases. Now, you're, you're as professional as they come, Jim, so don't take offense with me asking this question. Are you going to keep an eye on Connecticut at Houston tonight <laughs> while you're calling the action on, on NFL? Well, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm wearing a Houston shirt right now and a Houston golf cap. I heard you speculating on the national champions this mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. We're still very much in the race, and I know that makes a lot of the Power Five conferences, those, those followers, a little angry. But uh, the, the reality is, I'm going to be fully immersed in, in Miami and Cincinnati. <laughs> Are you I, concerned that I had the same deal two you like two weeks ago? By the way, oh Houston yeah, was playing well, that's University Cincinnati, of Cincinnati. That's correct. And I was worried about that game. You should, yeah, until the fourth quarter hit, I, I had the benefit of having it on on the TV uh, screen while watching you and Sims do your thing. But uh, I, I would be remiss if I did uh, not ask you before I let you go, uh, Jim, of uh, an Arnold Palmer story from you. That gives testament to this man's. Uh, well, that's a hard thing to do. Life, if you can. Span, but how much time we have? Thirty uh, seconds. You no, know, I got about uh, two minutes for you, Jim. Just the most gracious, kind-hearted guy you could ever ever meet. The 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 the, the sweetest superstar of any sport. I can't imagine it. And maybe there are some that were on his level, but in terms of connecting with his audience and making everyone feel special, walking into a room. And that, that room could be a room filled with royalty. I have had a front row seat to some of these kind of occasions. I don't have the time to tell you all these stories. But busboys and servers were treated just with the same act of kindness that he would with, you know, the leaders of industry that he might be walking into a room to entertain and speak to. He would reach out, shake hands, oftentimes give him a lapel pin, one of his little umbrellas, and a give you that smile and make you feel good. And it just, I don't even know where to begin. Um, he's, I, I, I feel so fortunate that I had Arnold Palmer as a, as a friend and even you could say a mentor in my life. He attended our wedding. He came out last summer to our home in California and was there for a couple of days. And I've taken this one really hard. And we're going to have a very brief, like 10 second going to commercial. Um, tribute to Arnold tonight, and I'm already, of course, uh, just trying to hold, hold up emotionally when I talk about him. And I, what can you say in 10 seconds? Maybe yeah. I don't say anything, but uh, mm-hmm. it's a tremendous loss. It's the saddest week in the history of the game, as far as I'm concerned. Jim, you're the best. I will. Uh, I look forward to uh, broadcasting with you tonight. I always consider that a, a treat, so I look forward it's to it. It's going to be fun. You guys in the studio are tearing it up. As you <laughs> noticed last week, yes. uh, when, when Marshall said something, Yes, I, I did. I came back later in the game and gave him some props. I did notice that, but he did got he 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 did not choose the Patriots last week. So he did not, but he talked about Houston. If they can't win this game, how are they going to beat them? True. And I just thought that was really an interesting observation. Absolutely. Uh, you guys are doing great, and um, anytime you want to talk before the Thursday games, I'm available. Excellent, Jim. All right, pal. Appreciate it. Thanks. You know. That's Jim Run. Nance right there. The Rich Eisen Show weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.